Hey guys, it's me, Jason. Uh, we're gonna break down another org in the game. Live from Cottage Grove. How's everybody doing on my day? It's gonna get a hopefully you, you guys are having a good day. Um, Ogan played San Jose State, slept, 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 walked through that game. Mostly the game um, didn't play the best. Um, we're gonna break it down. Ogan did win. Um, Ogan did win 35-22. Um, it was it was a double digit game throughout. Um, it's it's not like it was a single touchdown game, but Ogan Ogan played sloppy throughout the ball game. We're gonna talk about this. It was 14 nothing the game. Quick, Ogan takes advantage of a turnover. Um, Herbert hits bleeding down the middle for a long touchdown. Wilden was the um, wide right receiver with 92 yards, three catches, and that touchdown. It was 14 nothing to quick. San Jose State gets another six points. Um, Oregon um, added another seven to 21 assists. But before the halftime break, Oregon was on the inside of the five. Justin just throws a fastball, got tipped, bounced up in the air, and I got picked. So it was 21 assists at halftime. Not really an impressive score. Um, to everybody that didn't watch the game. But Oregon um, added 14 more to um, San Jose State's 16. They actually outscored Oregon in the second half, but it was a 35-22 ball game. Like I said, it was never within two schools. Um, Oregon controlled, but it was, it, was an, it was a sleepwalk game for sure. Oregon that average about 2.7 was put on the ground. San Jose State only got a yard per K, which was is great for Oregon. But Oregon didn't make a lot of mistakes um, in this ball game. You look at Herbert's stats: 16 out of 34, 47 percent. I'm pretty sure that's a career low. Um, when he's starting the ball game, um, he did throw for three on nine, um, three touchdowns to pitch. Um, it's just the rest, probably one of the rest defenses we'll face all year, um, besides Arizona. Um, CJ Vidal, 15 to catch 42 yards. Um, Oregon's biggest rush was 90 yards, um, the whole game, um, Love for the Spartans. He was 15 out of 31 at 238, one touchdown. Two picks should have been three. Had um, Oregon had a pick that um, would have set up Oregon, then it set up the red zone. But it was a personal foul on the quarterback. Literally a unnecessary hit on the quarterback um, and negated that. Um, that um, an exception. Um, look at it. Oregon, 35 points. You, you look at the box score. You, you're not going to be impressive if you're an Oregon hater or even an Oregon fan. But look at it. You have a kickoff return um, when they made it 35-16, But you have a kick return turn against James. But a uh, holding um, brought back the brought back the um, brought back the kick. You had a defensive holding on a fourth down that would have stopped the Spartans. And after that, the Spartans scored. That's a touchdown that you gave them. Um, and why not? You you have a um, season high in penalties. Six penalties for 59 yards. Um, very unaccurate, unlike the Ducks, unorgan like. Um, hey, I, I get it. You, you got game day coming in. Game day hasn't been here since 2014. And, and you slap walk. You, you slap walk through this game. 
and one I I get it. Everybody does this uh, um, sooner or later, especially with the new coaching the staff. Okay, um, I know most of these coaches were here last year, but um, it's Chris DeBart's first year, and and you you have these games throughout the year. It's it's very hard to play 12 games in a row at your absolutely best. It's very hard, okay? Um, besides Alabama, um, I don't know who's played three perfect games, okay? Outside of Alabama, you could go down the list. Um, Ohio State at times, seventh last, last night, didn't look the best. Clemson hasn't looked the best in every game that they played. Uh, Jose hasn't looked the best. Well, you, you could almost put Jose in the Alabama category. But outside of that, everybody just hasn't looked the best. It's very hard to play 12 games. I get that. Um, you, you look at it. The, the thing I like listening to the um, um, press conferences and when I listen to Chris DeWatt's press conference and and yeah, it's it's good that you get a win. It's good that you scored 35 points, but the players know that this is not acceptable for the Oregon standard. They have set the ball really high for themselves, and the one um when I, when I say that, I'm not saying oh the expectations in the locker room is a pack of title. I'm the, I'm saying their expectations for themselves is to play at a very high standard 100% of the time. And they didn't do that today. Um, oh, yesterday. Um, so, but I, I will say this. It is a win, but um, there is a win that the watch the film today and realize that this didn't meet the standard. Um, whatever it is, um, whatever it is, um, if it's um, offensive line blocking, um, we were um, in a lot of um, a lot of um, not good down to distances. So when I say that, we're always in the second and eight. We want to be in that second and five and one out. Um, so it, it wasn't a very good game per se, um, and we all know this. Um, Oregon has to play better moving forward, and they know this. Um, I, I would say, bottom line, this is a pre <coughs> pre uh, prime example of looking ahead. Looking ahead that you got Stanford coming in, you got game day coming in, and I I would just say that. I don't wanna no offense to San Jose State, I don't wanna and there's a reason that Oregon was a forty point favorite. But saying that, um, I hope it wasn't perfect with all of his balls yesterday and and he knows that. All of his throws. He knows that. The offensive line knows that they sort of blocked better. The wide receivers know they sort of played better. The DBs sort of played better. I would say the front seven played absolutely great. Justin Hardis played great. Um, Judge played great. Troy Dyer played great. But outside of that, everybody kind of slept by. This is a team game. But moving forward, Oregon's going to play better, I truly believe. I said that this on the Twitter yesterday, and I, I believe it. With all the games that I've seen, and I've, I watch football all day, um, sun up, sun down. Okay, what I've seen, Oregon's the third best team in the North, beyond Washington at Stanford. You could, you could say who's one, who's two, whatever. It really doesn't matter. But I will say this, both comes to us, okay, and that really means a big deal, okay, home games, winning in the Pac-12 is 
going to be hard. And if number 10 is was in the pocket and there's height, I'm um, getting the ball in the center. Oregon's going to be a tough team to play. Okay. I'm um, moving forward. Organized Stanford next week. College game day will be here um, in Eugene. Um, unfortunately, I, I can't go because I don't have a car. I don't live in Eugene. So, um, but I'll uh, definitely be watching the game today. That's up for Hawaii. Uh, that's up for San Jose State. They have a bye this week. And they open the Mountain West play against Hawaii. Um, so, that's that's what they have. And, like I said, pretty much Oregon was walking through this game as a Duck fan. Um, could soon a little bit, but uh, I want, it's no time to hit the t- panic book. But then um, you realize that you have a top 10 team coming in next week. Um, there's a lot of big things and whatnot. And of course, the ball really just the team on this and whatnot. So, um, so I, it's, it's no time to panic, bottom line. Like I said, Oregon had Stanford last week. The game is the 5 o'clock game on ABC. And San Jose State gets a bye week, and they will play Hawaii. I believe that's a road game, might be a home game. I'm not really sure. So, once again, once again, Oregon gets the W, 55-20, uh, 35-22, my bad. And Oregon, that's what we know. Bottom line, we know that's where you want to be this time of the year. And they host a very good at Stanford team. My name is Ben and Jason, and have a great day. Go Ducks!